is that in the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s, men particularly started to say, well, who am I? If I'm not a part of an ethnic stream, if I'm not part of a tribe, part of a neighborhood, I'm going to find myself through my work. What I am. So men still, to this day in some ways, meet and say, um, so, so uh, what do you do? They're really asking, who are you? That question is still a little bit out there, but this was big time, 40s, 50s, 60s, a job for life. Remember our parents or grandparents? A job for life. That would define you. I am a carpenter. I am a salesman. I am a, I am. Do you see? I am. I am a. We could answer that. How many of us now can say, I am a, I am a? I am a, maybe we can, but not nearly with the self-definition forces of the 50s and 60s. As that started breaking down, here, the I, the ich, not this I, and I think of this as the eye of the needle. The eye. The eye of the needle. Now, this was all unconscious. All of this was going on, I think, somewhat unconsciously. Now, here's the thing, and I've learned this in the United States and Canada when you say, here's the thing, you've got to say something good, right? So, here's the thing. Here's the, the thing is that... That was all moving, surging, moving, the evolution of consciousness, absolutely. <coughs> Mostly that would be fairly non-controversial. Most of us could kind of get that picture. But I think what's going on is that this I exists right here in this, in this changing <coughs> tide of, of human evolution, of the consciousness, of, ev of the evolution of consciousness. It changes. <clears throat> and now what we have is the conscious I, the conscious family, the conscious town, um, conscious work, conscious tribe. Now we are in the past, for example, just I'll pick one example at random. Um, was it Elijah who, who walked into the desert? He, he, he picked up and he just walked into the desert because he wanted to hear the voice of God in, in the Old Testament. Yeah? I think it was Elijah, wasn't it? Well, good. Okay. Um, and, and off he went. And he, there was the windstorms and the firestorms and the pestle. And all this stuff was going on. Now, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful story, but the point I want to make of that is that he had to pick up and walk into the desert to get away from his hereditary stream. Right? He somehow had to break. He had that early little little um, seed that was growing inside him that I want to hear the voice of God myself and not be told um, by the, the, the spiritual intermediary. I, right? I want to hear it myself. Very early days of that. Interesting little sign. Nowadays, we don't need to go anywhere to, to, to walk into that desert and achieve aloneness. We carry that aloneness within us. We carry our deserts, our places of aloneness, right here. And that place of aloneness is no more acute than in parenting. Right? Because our kids do such weird things. <laughs> and they just they they push every known button. Buttons that we didn't even know existed. They push. And we go, wow. And I find myself looking at my children sometimes saying, and just thinking, if I had said that to my father. <laughs> And my daughter looks up at me because she's been reading Little uh, House on the Prairie and she looks at me and says, Would you got a whipping, Daddy? 